Hello everyone, my name is Cliff. Welcome to this video and today I want to talk about a double opt-in versus single opt-in or usually I say it the other way around single opt-in versus double opt-in but whatever you get the point. Um, so long story short if you are into really any kind of marketing um, but I guess in this case affiliate marketing um, and if you want to scale your affiliate marketing business up to the point uh, you know where the big shots are you know up to where all the super affiliates are making um, you know at least $100 a day $200 a day $500 a day uh, and higher um, then you're going to need to implement uh, email marketing and really you know other forms of marketing um, into your overall business efforts but in this video I'm going to be focusing on email marketing specifically and um, kind of a, uh, a bit of a wall that most people get to and they don't know kind of where to go um, uh, yeah I, I, uh, which is single opt-in versus double opt-in and also something that um, Aweber might change this eventually um, I, obviously I'm, I'm in the back end of my Aweber account right now which is for those of you who don't know one of these services that you can use for your email marketing um, for your email marketing services you have Aweb, Aweber and GetResponse are the two most popular I've also tried out Sendlane before um, and uh, you know there there are others out there. I haven't tried them all, uh, but Aweber is one I currently use at this very moment. Although I might go back to get response, or I might kind of test them both out. Anyway, um, all of them have the options for single opt-in and double opt-in. But um, long story short, let me actually treat myself down a little bit here. Uh, let me go down to I'm going to down to there. I'm going to put myself down in the corner right now. Um, long story short you will go to a website like this one right here that i found this is a pet based website this is actually petfinder.com and i just want to find an opt-in form in general so uh obviously you would go to any site um and uh you know any site that has an opt-in form you're gonna have to put it in your email address and once you put your email address into an, an opt-in form the uh, the person who owns the site who you know obviously installed this form onto their site has to make the decision as to whether they want you to go directly onto their email list once you hit the button uh, you know you want once you hit the submit button this one is more complicated but most of them just have an email address or email address and first name um, but um, once you hit the button to submit it they have to make they have to make the decision as to whether you go onto their list right away or whether you receive a confirmation message um, confirming that you want to be on their list which will you know which looks something like this um, and you know there are pros and cons to it um, so I've actually written a few down um, so the arguments for this um, are that you get more qualified leads because they you know they have to go through an extra step to say yes I actually don't want to receive this so they're more likely to remember who you are um, and therefore you'll get higher quality leads um, they're also you're also less likely to be reported reported for a spam complaints which um, you know really I, I personally think that as long as you engage in good ethical marketing that you're less likely to be re reported for spam overall but some people say that you're less likely to be reported for spam and you also um, are likely to get lower autoresponder fees uh, I do not know if a Weber only counts your opt-ins that have officially opted in or if they count even the ones that are pending I don't know um, but uh, uh, yeah, you get lower autoresponder fees just in general. Um, for example, uh, I know that counts. Um, I, I know it's that way with places like GetResponse. But generally speaking, you get lower autoresponder fees because you're filtering out the amount of people that you know come in, uh, and actually, you know, you limit the amount of people that you're paying for because you only get the most serious people. That's what I'm trying to say. It. The arguments against it, um, like I said, because people have not uh, confirmed their opt-ins. Um, it will actually, you know, cost you leads. Uh, you know, if you send 100 people, if you send 100 people to a page and they have to go through an extra step of confirming um, their email address via um, an email that they get like this, then a lot of people are just not going to bother with it, or you know, they're just going to be too lazy. Um, sometimes I'm too lazy, but if I want the information bad enough, then I'll confirm my subscription. Uh, but you know, at least they know that they're on my list. Um, so it will cost you leads based on uh, the unconfirmed opt-ins. Um, your list will grow slower because you know not everybody is going to confirm their subscription so um, versus going straight to your list not everybody will go straight to your list if they if they if they don't make it through this barrier they don't end up on your list so your list will grow slower um, and then if you get into paid advertising in the future your ad spend will be higher if you're doing it like cost per click if you're not if you don't know what cost per click and all that is uh, essentially if you spend money to get 100 people to see your opt-in page uh, and you know you have a certain number that opt-in um, if they are single opt-in, then they'll go right on your list, but they're double opt-in, then they have to go to this step first. And since this extra step, you're going to get less people actually winding up on your list, and therefore you're going to end up spending more, you know, uh, in, in, basically in the long run. 
sorry, my words weren't coming out properly there. Um, so yeah, my verdict is the confirmed opt-in is not really needed. I don't really see a benefit to it. Um, I, I can understand why some people use it because yeah, you are making the person go through an extra step um, to get the information that, that they want to get. And, and this could be, I guess you could say that the leads are more are higher in quality and more qualified to some extent, but at the same time, um, it also depends on how you treat them once they get on your list. So if you just you know send them a, a bunch of junk emails and a bunch of spam emails, then the quality that they the quality of your list um, up, upon entry, I guess uh, the quality of your list from the time that they enter your list is going to degrade over time. So you know you still have to treat your list with respect and you know you know, like they actually matter and give them what they want for them to remain high quality leads. Cause it doesn't matter how qualified your leads are, how high quality they are. If you treat your list like garbage and, you know, treat them like they're just throwaway numbers and, and statistics, it's not going to, it's not going to matter long-term. Um, so yeah, my verdict is it's not really needed. Uh, I, you know, except for maybe uh, certain circumstances, but, uh, yeah, I'd see m most people I see turn it off. And speaking of turning it off, um, yeah, like I said, uh, to get to this page, if you're in if you're in a Weber, you would come to the list options right here. You could click on list settings, and then it would actually take you to the basic settings tab right here. So you would need to come down here and click on confirmation message. Then it would bring you to a page that looks like this. Um, you have a few options of what you can choose right here. Um, I just usually just leave it at whatever it is because I don't use confirmed opt-in. Um, maybe in the future that might change if I see an argument for it, but I just don't see a need for it right now. Um, at least not within a Weber and places like that. Who knows? Who knows, who knows what the future holds? Um, so then you can come here and you can edit your message if you want to. I don't usually do that. But um, based on the way that it is um, right out of the gate, um, it, uh, if you come, you know, if you come here after creating a new list, this message right here will actually, this switch will actually be turned on. Send confirmation message to Aweber sign-up forms. Um, I turn this off. Uh, obviously, it's turned off right now. I'm not gonna turn it back on because then I would have to go through the next step that I'm about to tell you. Um, even though this is turned off, this does not turn it off everywhere. And this is what throws a lot of people off. And I don't, and this is something that I don't even always see big marketers mentioning. Uh, but if you come in here, um, let me make sure I'm actually still recording. All right, just wanna make sure. It's always good to kind of check and make sure you're still recording. Um, but if you come over here and turn this off, this only turns it off um, if you are using the Aweber forms directly um, hosted within Aweber. So for example, if you have a page builder on your website or if you are taking your opt-in form and you're integrating it with a, with a third-party client, um, then Aweber sees that as you know not directly hosted by them. Um, so for, for example, uh, if, this, if these people over here use Aweber, then they're plugging it in, uh, then they're, this is not an, an Aweber hosted form. So they're, you know, they're using some kind of, if this is a WordPress website, then they're using some kind of, uh, some, some kind of page builder and they're integrating it with their page builder. So if you did that, then uh, it doesn't matter if you turn this off or not, you have to, you have to reach out to Aweber directly and uh, get, them, get them to turn it off. Now there's two ways that you can do that. One way is to call them. Uh, I'm gonna bring myself back up a bit here. One way is to call them. Uh, and you can just uh, a Weber customer service phone number, and you know I, I, I've done that before. But the way I started doing it now is um, let me come over here. I'm going to I'm going to come down here to this little box down here. Am I pointing the right way? Yeah, this little thing right down here. Um, you're, you're right there by my thumb. I'm doing this at a very awkward angle, but yeah, you can see this little this this little blue thing down here. You go down there, you click that, and it starts up a chat. You start to chat with uh, with, with, with a Weber staff, and um, I'm going to come back over here now because that's getting kind of weird. Um, let me come back down a little bit. I guess that's good enough. Um, you start up a chat with Aweber and you basically tell them, hey, I want to disable double opt-in or confirmed opt-in. It's basically the same thing, just a different way of saying it. I want to disable that for my list called and then whatever your list name was that you created, you would get in that list name. And chances are they're going to ask for, um, well, chances are it will go one or two ways. This is the way it always happens for me. I don't know why it's so different depending on who I talk to. Um, but it's it's a flip of the coin. You will either get a representative asking to see um, your um, your your email signup page, and uh, I did this a few days ago, and um, I hadn't connected the back end, so I, I had not connected the the um, the signup forum um, to I I just hadn't connected everything on the back end. Um, so I I basically sent them to a page that 
kind of looked like this, but when you entered in your email address, it didn't take you anywhere because I hadn't connected it on the back end, like I just said. Um, and that was the, that, that kind of slowed the process down a little bit. Um, but they asked, like, uh, they asked what kind of integration I was using on the back end, so I told them, and um, they kind of went on ahead and went on ahead and disabled it completely, uh, disabled confirmed opt-in completely on the back end. I don't know why they make it such a headache, but they do. Um, so yeah, I had to do that. Um, and then sometimes you'll uh, reach out and say, "Hey, I need double opt-in uh, disabled for, um, for for my list called, you know, this or you know, you, you know, let's just say that this called baking apple pies. I don't know. I'm making stuff up. Let's just say uh, I need double opt-in double opt-in disabled on my list called baking apple pies. Um, and then sometimes you'll get you know a, a reply back saying, "Okay, all done. Anything else I can help you with?" And usually when you <laughs> Usually, if you get that message, if you've got other lists in your account that you want um, that, uh, that you want disabled on, give them those list names too. Um, I've done that before, and, I, and I've gotten like four or five list names disabled in one go. Because when you get somebody who's willing to do it that freely, take advantage of it because um, <laughs> it's um, uh, it, it'll just save you time like in the long run. So. Uh, sorry for the glare on my glasses, by the way. I keep forgetting. I, I keep forgetting that I have a glare on my glasses, but I think I think you get the point. So that's kind of my um, spiel about um, single opt-in versus double opt-in. I, I've kind of given you some of the pros and some of the cons. I don't really think that it's really worth it in most cases. I'm sure that there could be arguments made for cases uh, in favor of it, but for the most part, I don't think that you really need it. Um, a Weber does kind of make it kind of a pain to get around it despite the fact that it makes it appear that it's turned off on the back end but really it's not fully turned off on the back end um there are some exceptions like i think they say uh, if you're integrating it with jvzoo and if um if the person is going through a paypal um checkout process then i think that bypasses um um double up and all together uh like well, if you have it turned off um I think, but you also might want to contact a Weber because I don't know. They can always change their policies. They can always update things. I never know. So if you if you have any questions about anything, just contact them first because um, you know if people sign up to your list and then they have to go through you know if they come to this kind of page and then they have to go through that too, then uh, it turns a lot of people off. And some people are like whatever, I can't be bothered with this. And then you know that's a lead that you lost. Um, so yeah, that's that. I just kind of want to cover that because this is something that I ran into trouble with. Uh, in the past and some people will just tell you to, you know I'll just come in here turn it off right there and then you're good to go not necessarily it really does depend uh, on what you're doing like I said if you're if you're using one of Aweber's built-in forms hosted on their own website um, then uh, yeah then it's, it's, that's exactly what this is for send confirmation messages for Aweber signup forms um, you know I, I wish that they would say does not include integration with third-party platforms and this and that and this and that and I, yeah, it, it, I wish they make it clear. Anyway, that's really all I have for this video. I hope this has helped somebody out there because, man, it has given me headaches over the years and still does kind of give me headaches. And a lot of people do not use Aweber because of their double opt-in, single opt-in um, issues that they have. Because while you can get things disabled, uh, you know, other platforms don't make you go through as many hoops to, to get stuff disabled. Maybe one day Aweber will disable that, uh, will disable this and make it easier to disable it across the board easier. Watch them do it right after I post this video. <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, just say precaution. Take these things, keep these things in mind because you need to know, you really need to know them if you're using Aweber mainly. Um, but even if you're not using Aweber, um, the um, you know the uh, the pros and cons that I laid out for single opt-in versus double opt-in. Either way, those uh, those still um, those still something that you need to know and keep in mind. So, with that said, uh, thanks for watching. I hope you've gotten a lot of value from this video. Um, if you are interested in uh, learning more about affiliate marketing and taking your affiliate marketing business to, to the next level, then uh, check the link below in this video's description. And uh, with that said, thanks for watching and have a good day.